Molly. For me, one of the most important things that we did was when we went into the auditorium and all the lights were out and we could just say something that we had already memorized and just focus on our vocal variation. For me, the arm movements just came to me. I was screaming at the top of my lungs at some points, but was comfortable to bring my voice down to whisper. And that, that really helped me coming back into the classroom because I could remember that moment in the pitch dark and just think of how comfortable I was with yelling at the top of my lungs in front of everyone. But I had no idea like I could see any of you. Another thing that was important to me was when we were in here focusing on our arm gestures and saying something like the ABCs or a nursery rhyme. Um, I thought coming into this class using huge arm gestures was a huge part of public speaking and that was one of the biggest things you could do. But now coming from this class, I realize it depends on how big your voice is when you use your big arm gestures and it doesn't make a difference if what you're saying um, or it, I guess, um, what am I trying to say? If your arm gestures aren't matching your vocal tone, then it doesn't really matter how big your arm gestures are. Um, and lastly, the most important thing for me was Freeform Friday. Every Friday when we would go out into the pit and have to get up in front of everyone in the pit and other people in the atrium, that was terrifying to me at the beginning and it would make my legs shake and make my heart beat really fast when I had to think about going up and speaking in front of everyone. But after doing it every Friday, it, beca it became more comfortable for me and more natural to go up and talk about anything that I wanted to talk about and it made me comfortable, which I think is really important in public speaking to be comfortable in front of everyone. One minute, 59 seconds. <laughs> Rebecca. <coughs> so the first Free Forum Friday we had here, I was terrified, and I did not want to get up in front of all of you and talk, which is great because Mr. Handel said, oh, you can just sit, you can just watch, you don't have to. So that was my plan the whole time, Tell about halfway through the period, when I don't even remember who said it, but it was someone made this comment, I was like, I have to go up and talk. The partner was like, oh no, Stacy yes, did. But I got up there, and I started talking, and as I was talking, I wasn't actually conscious of what it was that I was saying, but only the fact that I was like, oh my god, I'm like talking in front of people. So, that was the first revelation, was just, just start talking, and it won't be so bad. And then the second thing was actually practicing for the vocal variety ones when we were all in the auditorium. I was at my house and I was sort of like wandering around and I was just talking. I was like, I said a boom, tick a boom, over and over. And I started becoming really, really conscious of what my voice sounded like. And I realized that most of the time I speak in this really low monotone. It just sort of like goes on. And then I couldn't shake that at all. Um, so that's all I ever really thought about was how I sounded like. But the good thing about that is once you notice that, is you can go up here if you want or you can like switch it up more if you're conscious of it. So number two, think about how you sound. And then my final um, sort of thought was one of the first exercises we did here when we had our partner and we were like looking them in the eye and we had to say, there's no place I would rather be than here. And that was a lie. And I was very uncomfortable <laughs> saying that. And so I chipped around and I was just like laugh and not make eye contact with Jenny. Um, but then Ms. Randall was like, all right, like now go up in front of the class and do it. Um, and so that was sort of, I was like, okay, I can get up here and laugh, or I can get up here and just pretend like this is exactly where I want to be. So I did the latter, which was my final thing, which is just pretend like you're having a good time up here. 152. Sophia. Okay, so I want to talk about impromptu speaking and more specifically talking about Freeform Friday because uh, we were in the classroom for a while and everybody sort of got comfortable with each other and then Mr. Hanel was like, oh, like, how about we go to the atrium? And everyone was like, no, like, no, 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 no. But we just, we ended up going to the atrium and that took our comfort that was in this classroom just completely messed it up and everyone was really nervous about going up, at least I was. And it wasn't exactly nerves about standing in front of people because I don't really get afraid of that. 
but it's like more of a public setting and I'm afraid, uh, I was afraid, I guess I maybe a little bit still am, about being judged for what I say instead of like, but I realized from this class that it's more about the delivery and how you look like, than what you actually say. So if you own what you say and you look good saying it, then that's kind of, that kind of brings your speech up a little bit more. So. Freeform Friday helped me get over kind of my fear of being afraid to say things in front of large crowds that maybe like were against what other people thought. Um, so the next thing I want to touch on was the <clears throat> the activity in the dark theater, and um, I personally thought that it emphasized the visual, the importance of the visual, out of all things. Um, because in the beginning of the school year when we were talking about, uh, not school year, it's semester, when we were talking about the order of importance, I was actually a person that placed vocal in front of visual, um, and this, and I wasn't completely convinced until that uh, activity, because um, I realized when I was actually taking notes about people that I thought did well or that I thought did badly, like, wasn't exactly lining up with who I usually thought did well. There was a lot of people that didn't usually stand out that stood out a lot, and that was because, you know, other people have strengths. Some people aren't great about making gestures or being big or whatever. Some people are great about varying their pitch and their tone. Um, so that's another thing that I thought was really great. Um, and the last thing that I want to touch on was uh, the memorized speech that we had to do, whether it had to do with big arm gestures or small gestures or standing still, I thought it was so funny. The, the, the things that people chose to memorize were always either raps or like kind of like weird nursery stories or like the counting, like one, two. I just thought it was so funny because um, even if, like, okay, maybe you did prepare if you did the counting, but, like, maybe you didn't. Still, I thought it was hilarious. I thought that it was a great way for us to use our arms, <laughs> like, just focus on the assignment and also have fun with it, and it was entertaining. And I had fun doing raps, so, yeah. Three minutes and one second. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't feel that long. It didn't feel that long. To us either. It was good. <laughs> no. So, not a lot of people are naturally good public speakers, and I am definitely not one of those people. But I think I have a lot of potential. And I didn't really realize that until the like the assignment in the dark auditorium. Because when I'm in here and you're all like looking at me because you have to, I get really nervous. And when I get nervous, I lose my train of thought and I run out of words to say. And I fall into this weird like caricature of a shitty stand-up comedian. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and that sucks a lot. But when I was in the auditorium, no one was really looking at me. I mean, you couldn't see me. So... I could just like yell and like do this and like I realized that I have a very strong voice but I never knew how to use it because I was too scared. And another important lesson that I learned in this class is to not try to be so cool all the time and when I say cool I mean really nonchalant and chill about everything because if you're like that then people will think you're boring and they'll probably forget about you as soon as you're done talking. And you shouldn't tone down your enthusiasm just because you're afraid of looking weird. And that applies not only to public speaking, but to my everyday life, I think. And the final lesson that is also really important is that there's no one way to be a good public speaker. We watched a lot of TED Talks in here, and in all of those there were Everyone had different ways of speaking and moving that made them different, but they were all really good, at least most of them were. <laughs> so that made me feel like, well, you know, why can't I also be a good public speaker? Public speaking isn't one of my worst fears anymore, which 
is huge, and I don't think I would have been able to say that if I hadn't taken this class. All right, two minutes, ten seconds. Andrew. Three things that I thought were the most important from this class were the Beowulf reading, the vocal variety presentations in the dark, and our meditative activity at the beginning of the semester. So first, the Beowulf reading, I thought that was impactful mostly for me because it was the one thing that I actually practiced for. <laughs> and I took first period to go into the uh, sound rooms and uh, practice with Elsa and Suzanne and they helped me you know, put in little gestures here and there and put in pauses and uh, choose places to emphasize what I was talking about. I thought that was really helpful and then I got up here and I thought I was doing great and then I watched the film and I was like, wow, even though I practiced that much, it didn't really translate into a whole lot. So I realized that I really need to put more effort into stuff if I want to get a better result. The second thing was the uh, presentations in the dark. I thought that was powerful because we, I realized how much uh, your, what you sound like can impact you. There are some people who I didn't really think were great presenters in the light, who sounded better in the dark, and then also conversely, there were some people who did really well in the light, and then, or really badly in the dark, who usually do well in the light. So, yeah, that kind of gave me like a realization that you can, like the dark can bring out light and your voice. And then the final thing, the meditative activity, those two lines, there's no place I'd rather be than here, there's nothing I'd rather be doing than speaking to you, those two lines helped me to get rid of all the nervousness I had in my body before I went up and I, like, presented, and it helped me to just be centered, because no matter what's going on in your life, if you're thinking about, oh, I have these assignments, I have all this stuff going on outside of school, if you go up and you say those things, then you're just centered and you're ready to present. 156. <coughs> Read. <coughs> 